Let's talk for a minute about integrals. Another word for integral is antiderivative. And an antiderivative or an integral is a fancy way of saying find the area under a curve. Now curve in the mathematical sense doesn't necessarily mean a squiggly line, it just means whatever the function is being graphed. So for example, if I have a linear graph, the area under the curve represents this area right here from the function to the horizontal axis. That's the area under the curve. So to take an integral, because it's an antiderivative, let's take just a moment and review derivatives really quickly. So derivative, fancy word for instantaneous slope, to take a derivative, if I have a function like x equals a t to the n, then the derivative of x with respect to time, written as dx over dt, is equal to n times a t to the n minus 1. So two steps in taking a derivative. You bring the exponent down in front and multiply. Then you reduce the exponent by 1. To take an integral, or an antiderivative, we're going to take those same two steps. We're going to do them in reverse. So let's start again with x equals a t to the n. But this time, the notation for integral looks a little interesting. It's this symbol right here, kind of a stretched out s, of x dt. Now, what does that mean, the integral of x dt? So I could read it as the integral of x with respect to time, just like this was the derivative of x with respect to time. But let's take a look at where we get this notation from. So if I look at a graph of x and t, and just some random curvy graph. If it's linear, it's easy to find the area. But if it's a curvy graph, kind of random, then it's difficult to find the area. So one of the ways we can find the area of a curvy graph is to actually slice it into chunks and estimate the area of each of these chunks by treating them as rectangles, for example. So each of these little chunks has a base that's equal to delta t and a height equal to the, func the value of the function x. So the area of this rectangle is the value of this x function times this little delta t. So if I imagine, I can get more and more accurate by slicing it thinner. In other words, as delta t gets smaller and smaller, I get more and more accurate. And so when we get to the infinitely small delta t, becomes the derivative d, dt. dt of the dx dt, again, remember this delta dx dt is just slope notation. It's the change in x, delta x, over delta t as delta t gets really small. So the dt here, the derivative d, is an infinitely small delta. So that's where this notation comes from. So how to do the integral? I have the integral of my function a t to the n dt. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to do the exact opposite of the derivative. Now the derivative, remember, first thing we did was bring the exponent down and multiply and then we reduced it by 1. So taking those steps exactly in reverse, I'm going to increase the exponent by 1, and then I'm going to divide by the new exponent. So if I do that, that is how I do an integral. Let's look at an example. If x equals 5t cubed, then the integral of 5t cubed dt is 5 t to the fourth over four. Now, I can do a quick check on this to see if I got the in integral correct, because again, integral is antiderivative, so if I do the derivative of this, I should get back to my original function. So the derivative of this, of this function, I would get, bring the exponent down in front, four times five-fourths t to the 4 minus 1, I do get, in fact, the force cancel, and I get 5t to the third. So you can see that this is, in fact, the integral, because when I do the anti, when I do the, when I do the derivative, the inverse process, I get back to the original function x. So to take a derivative, you bring the exponent down in front, multiply, and reduce the exponent by 1. To do an integral, you increase the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent. That is how you do an integral.